You're listening to The Raw Reaction on the Angry Marks Podcast Network. Almost two years ago, the two men who come before you took to the airwaves for the first time together. It's Angry Tensai and my good friend, Killa Kev, reuniting. Killa Kev, how you doing tonight, baby boy? I'm doing all right. What's going on over there? It's great to be on the air with you. It's been too long since you and I did a two-man booth as Vic's in Turkey this week. Vic is in Turkey fulfilling his national service he's he he is doing what only a, a real man can do what's interesting is and i don't know if he sent you the pictures but he actually does have an f isa shirt and it doesn't say f it says the full word and he's wearing it in turkey yes he's getting himself killed he, I'm he, convinced. i i don't know he 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 thinks he's doing the right thing though and he, he he's gone over to join the fight and he he's fighting it from one of the the least known fronts on on the battle scene today he's 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 he is waging war he's had enough and he's just not going to take it anymore aside from baltimore maryland there's nowhere i'd rather be less than turkey anyway we did have a raw to cover tonight and um i thought it was a fairly good show this was the go home show to payback and we did find out two weeks from now there's going to be another pay-per-view special. No, it's not. The- it's not pay-per-view. It's just a special event. Why did? But J- JBL did call it pay-per-view. I, I agree with you. I, I he he actually did say a pay-per-view. Yeah, he he was mistaken. It's not going to be available on pay-per-view. It is it is a special event only available on WWE Network. Do you think it's going to be like King of the Ring where it's like an hour long special or do you think it's going to be a full on out three hour show? I think it's probably just going to be a two hour show because right. because yeah. ever, as far as everybody knew last week, this was just a, a house show in Corpus Christi, Texas. Yeah, what I was what I what I was surprised about is payback kind of came out of nowhere. I mean, it's, it's a three week build and then they're going to do the elimination chamber in two weeks. It's, it seems like a lot to throw at us with Money in the Bank being the next pay-per-view. But, I mean, I guess they're trying to get the viewership up. And, I mean, these ultra gimmick matches will do that. I, I honestly think that the reason they're doing it, and I've not seen any confirmation yet, I think the reason they're doing it is because uh, NXT TakeOver was getting ready to happen um, next week. And that's pretty much almost going to be a scrub now. Because... Sami Zayn is hurt. Um, Finn Balor is hurt. Uh, Itami is hurt. Alex Riley is hurt. I mean, everybody just really got themselves all banged up in, in like a three week period. So they're not really going to be able to deliver on the NXT special like they are, like they were going to. So I think they kind of had to throw something together. And plus, you know, I mean, Elimination Chamber is off the schedule now. And the main reason it's off the schedule is because the Elimination Chamber cell itself is so heavy, there's not many venues where they can actually schedule to put that show. So they took it off the schedule, but they're going to be in a venue where they can erect that giant cage. And that thing is heavy. That that, that From what I read, that, that cage is like 10 tons. Jesus. No shit. Well, it's always one of the best pay-per-views, and it never really gets the burn it deserves because it's always in between rumble and um wrestlemania in the past so unfortunately it's not going to get a big build but it definitely should entertain as a a good a good match i think it should you know and i was kind of excited looking forward to raw tonight especially after all the accolades raw got last week as being one of the best shows in a long time definitely best show of the year so i was hoping 
that going into tonight's show, we would get that, but it was a good show. I'll give it that, but I kind of think they, they kind of threw everything that really would have made this show great right at the beginning instead of, instead of pacing it out. And I, I think that hurt just a little bit. Yeah. I think I, I actually, you know what? I, I'll agree with you there. I, I, when I, when, when, before we got on the air, I would have said it was a very, very good raw. Although I like the way you just put it, it did it did kind of drag in to the final hour. I mean, as if it was a two hour show, it would have been a fantastic show. Yeah. But I do agree. You make a good point. Um, how did you feel about the start of the show with Triple H returning? Um, well, I since I haven't been watching, I didn't know Triple H had been gone a month. So I mean, you know, the the first thought I first thought that went through my mind is great. Apparently, he's not been there a whole fucking month and. I've not been here a month to not hear him talk. And the first night I tune in, he's back and he's going to run his mouth for 30 minutes. Jesus Christ. This is this. <laughs> no good deed goes unpunished. But yeah, he, he actually kept it fairly short, fairly sweet and relevant. So I appreciate that. Yeah. I mean, and this is this is like the lazy booking for a segment where basically this segment sets up all the matches for the night. And that's basically what I think it more accomplished than anything, because it was more of the same. We we know there's the heat between Kane and Seth Rollins, and Triple H basically came back and you know told the fans that he he's back to take control of the family and do its best for business and make sure that Seth Rollins walks out at the pay per view. But he was he's clearly very upset um, that Kane and Rollins are having so much infighting, and there was a lot of um. A lot of open-ended things within the segment. Um, he, Triple H clearly isn't happy with Kane. Seth Rollins points the finger at Triple H a bit for favoring Kane. However, Triple H said that if, if Seth Rollins, um, doesn't walk out of the, out of the payback as the champion, he may want to find another job, but he didn't actually make it an either or. It was kind of open-ended and Rollins, on the other hand, is expected to deliver and um, walk out as a champion. So, you know, I thought that was an interesting segment all to itself. There's obviously a huge heat between Kane and Seth Rollins. And, you know, I, I, I keep thinking to myself, I feel like Seth Rollins is going to get thrown out of the authority because you can see he's wearing on Triple H's last nerve as well. And Noble and Noble and um, Mercury didn't help the cause either, getting in Triple H's face saying, you know, I don't know if they realize, but um, Seth Rollins is a man around here now. So, uh, you know, I, I, there's definitely problems within the family with the authority, don't you think? Yep, absolutely. Now, Triple H took the opportunity to basically book everybody in the, the in matches tonight to renew everyone's faith in the authority and get everybody on the same page. We came to find out that Kane would take on Roman Reigns. Seth Rollins would take on Randy Orton in the main event. And Dean Ambrose would take on Noble and Mercury. Now, what I thought was interesting and what, what spun out of this was Noble and Mercury did take on Dean Ambrose in the first match. And I, I hated it at first because it was a, it was a handicap match and of course, Noble and Mercury are wrestling in suits. And I really hated it at first because it started off with Ambrose just dominating, like, like I thought would happen. But then Noble and, and Mercury got some of their shit in and they actually got built up for once because we're supposed to forget that they don't know how to wrestle. And JBL properly brought up how good these guys used to be. So yeah. I, I like that. I, I thought that needed to happen for a long time now, and I think that's the first time they've done that in some time. And 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 properly pointing out, and I know it's been pointed out a few times before, but still properly pointing out, Jamie Noble, former cruiserweight champion, Joey Mercury, three time former WWE World Tag Team Champion. You know, the you know those are those are strong credentials. You know, and they go right up there against Ambrose's own titles that he's already had. So. Yeah, they're, they're capable guys and they're good workers. And even in the ridiculous garb they were wearing tonight, they did get to do some, do some stuff for the first time than just taking a, a, an ass beating. It was definitely still one sided for Dean Ambrose and he did ultimately run through these guys, but they did get some stuff in. Yeah. So I and, appreciate that. You know, and then, you know, 
they're they're not elite level talent, but they're definitely on they're definitely on the upper end of talent still, no doubt. Yeah, I mean, I think they could definitely still go. I mean, without a doubt, um, if given the chance. Now, you know, you hell, know to if, me, if, I think the biggest thing on Raw. What's that? I was gonna say, if New Age Outlaws can go out there and hold the titles for a couple months, you know, I I think Mercury and and Noble could do it too. Well, this is the problem with only having one real established American televised professional wrestling organization. And I lump NXT obviously with WWE. You have a lot of talented guys and there's only so many spots and, you know, New Age Outlaws and Mercury and Noble may be long in the tooth. And I think Noble actually wants to be retired, but you know, these guys are, are top level talent. So. There's only so many spots to go around, you know what I mean? Yeah, there, yeah, there is, which is, which is why if you were going to send them out there, you know, actually compete in the division, I don't think you could have them out there competing long. Just the same with New Age Outlaws, you know, they were there for, for a couple of months, you know, eight weeks, maybe 12 weeks at the most, you know, and, and they went out there and they essentially put over every other team and built them up and gave them a little bit of a rub. And I think the division was a little bit better for it. Absolutely. I, I do agree with you. The Outlaws um, helped put the tag team division back on the map with the Usos probably about a year and a half ago. So, you know, and the Dust Brothers. So they definitely they definitely did did accomplish that. So that's for sure. Yeah, I definitely I definitely like what the um, the J&J security is doing now. I like the fact that they are backing up uh, Rollins here. And, and as it appears that Kane is starting to pull away from the authority here, I think that's just going to end up giving them just a little bit more time to to do their thing and to continue to back Rollins and, and make Rollins look strong. So I I like where things are going here. Yeah, me too. And I, I think I think Rollins, in a way, trusts these guys. And as much as he he kind of craps on them, he does trust them, and they 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 do have a mutually beneficial relationship, which is good. And that's any relationship should have that. So it is, it is funny in a way, but it, but it's effective as a, as a way in the storyline. So good stuff there. Um, I think the best piece of the night, and I want to go right to it. I think I've said this about Randy Orton, um, probably over the last year that he's having the best run he's had in a long time. And I got to say the same thing about John Cena. John Cena's most meaningful work in years has been this U.S. title run. And I really loved his promo tonight about how almost WWE doesn't care about this title, but I do because this is a title where we can give anybody a chance anytime they want. And because I'm holding it, the title's legitimate. And he didn't actually say that, but it was certainly implied in what he said. And he talked and he, he even acknowledged how good the work has been over the last several weeks. Um, in the U.S. title open challenge tournament. And I have to say, this match tonight, if Sami Zayn wasn't previously, this was the best match he's had in the series against Adrian Neville. And man, did these guys tear down the house cab. What'd you think of the match? I would say that simply due to the fact that Sami Zayn was wrestling injured last week and Neville's not injured, um, this was the best match. This was Neville's best match on Raw so far. This was John Cena's best title, def- uh, well, yeah, best title defense so far. Um, and, and maybe really one of the best, uh, United States championship matches we've had, you know, definitely in a long time, maybe of all time. I don't know. Um, but wow, they, they literally pulled out, they pulled out every stop and every, high spot tonight and everything flowed almost perfectly can we just end this now and let's just say it john cena is a good worker and he's um, he's great there we go i just said that i will i will i will go further john cena is a great worker and he is a legitimate hall of famer in any wrestling hall of fame well said and no disrespect to the great hulk hogan but hogan could never have pulled off what John Cena, this is, this is honestly, I'm serious about this. This is the most versatile John Cena and the best work he's ever done right here with the U S title. How about that? Exactly. I will absolutely agree with that. And and I'll I'll agree with everything that you said that, you know, this is the U S title has needed something like this for a long time. It's needed a big name superstar to be willing 
to work at that level and work with these guys and put them over. And you know what? It's okay that these mid carters are not getting a win over John Cena because John Cena is making them look so good. Um, however, I, I will bring up one thing. I was in the chat room this evening and I was chatting with Bionic Iguana about uh, this and um, there, there's this trend of a lot of wrestlers going in and getting hot starts or what appears to be hot starts, but they're, they really just have like these wishy washy win loss records. And when it's finally time to cut them off from, from facing the top guys, then those uh, losses start to be magnified a little bit. And I, I'm maybe a little worried about Neville doing the same thing. I mean, it, yeah, it's okay for Neville to take a loss to John Cena, you know, or, some other big guys, but he's not going to be wrestling the top guys forever. There's going to be a point where there's no more top talent for him to face because they're all tied up in their programs. He's going to have to start facing the mid carters. And I'm really afraid that if you don't put the fire under Neville's ass again and just giving him win after win after win and putting the rocket up his ass, then all these losses he's going to make, he's going to take the mid carters is just really going to ruin him. No I mean, way. No, this guy's different. Why, why is Neville any different than, than Ryback? Why is he any different from, um, Drew McIntyre? Why is he any different from I Dolph Ziggler? I can tell you why. And I would, I would isolate Ziggler from those other guys. Z- it doesn't matter if Ziggler wins or loses. Everybody loves him. He doesn't, he doesn't, li- Ziggler could lose every single match, every single night. And he'll be over. Neville, on the other hand, and I said this when Vic and I were on a couple weeks ago. And, and remember, I my my exposure to Adrian Neville is limited to NXT, right? So I don't know his whole. I know I've heard the stories of how great of an indie wrestler he was, but literally, if I had no 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 knowledge of WWE, and you took all the belts away, and I watched wrestling watch a wrestling show and the order did not dictate who the top guys were. And I just watched all the matches all night. I would think Neville's the the main guy. I would think he's the, 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 the top guy. He's so much better than everybody else. I, 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 I'm that impressed with him. I think he's outstanding. He's the best worker in the WWE, the best, better than Ziggler, better than everybody. Neville's the best worker in the WWE right now. He may very well be. But being the best worker isn't enough. Um, there, there, you know, I will say oftentimes wins and losses don't matter. And I think right now, as long as he's facing top level talent, yeah, the wins and losses don't matter. But when you get down to, to wrestling the mid carters, when you get down to having to wrestle, um, you know, like Biggie Langston or Kofi Kingston or, you know, Zack Ryder, um, that's where wins and losses are going to matter, but, you know, and, and they're, and that, that's, that's the problem I have. If they There's have the him losing to the likes of guys like them, that's going to weaken him. And I don't There's want him to see him. weakened. He's, there's a role for him. He is the Benoit, Jericho, Eddie Guerrero role. He's going to be one of the rare guys that can continuously flip flop back from the IC to the world title. I, and I, I, th- I really believe that he's going to be in that worker bucket and, and Ziggler is kind of in that bucket and you can have a couple guys that are in that bucket that flip flop back and forth. Jeff Hardy was in that spot there's a couple guys that have done that over the years and I think that's where Neville fits and naturally he has a he has a link to 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 the United Kingdom and that whole Europe thing and you know guys like Zane guys no he's Canadian but Guys like Zayn from NXT and, and Sheamus and, and Barrett, you can always renew those feuds. And I think that's what they're going to do with him. I think he's going to be linked to those guys. Um, I, I don't, I, I'm not worried about Neville at all. And honestly, Cena's never put an average guy over like this, you know, and, and this wasn't a tense eye. I come on to the scene and I get a cheap win. This was a fully worked match. And I'm going to tell you something. I didn't think Neville had any chance. I didn't think any doubt the U.S. title was at risk up until the very last move. When he hit that move, I was like, holy shit, he's going to win. And then Rusev came out. But 
I, I actually didn't even think that, but you know, I'm, I was like, oh, well, Neville's going to get a loss here, but he didn't. He actually won the match by disqualification. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't think uh, arrow. I didn't think he was going to get in the arrow either, but when they finally did, it was like, Oh shit, this is great. This is great. This is great. But me, me and Bonna Guana in the chat room, like 10 minutes before that, pre, you know, we were just pretty amazed by everything that was going on. It's like, there's only one way that this can end. Rusev has to run in so that Neville doesn't take a loss here and John Cena still holds on to the belt and we put over the fact that the focus on this needs to be the pay-per-view match on Sunday. So it did. Rusev came out there literally. He I mean, he might as well have literally just whipped it out and pissed in everybody's Wheaties because that crowd was so mad. They are so mad that the they got robbed of the ending on this match and it was glorious well i think cena might as well have lost i mean i think this is even worse than a loss because it's like you got saved you know i i i don't know i think i think a loss wouldn't have been so bad yeah but then what but then what would be the point of the match on sunday i mean adrian neville versus rusev or John sure. Cena without a title against Rusev, and the only reason Rusev's in this match is because he wants the title back. Why he yeah. wants the United States title back, I don't know. But you know, it may, you know, so you don't know if this is because if it's a title or if it's a blood feud with Cena or you know, they what's can't, the, it's they confusing. can't end this John Cena open challenge. This is this is a great storyline. John Cena was so lucky to get this storyline, and, and he's ran with it. Yeah, and, I, they cannot end this. I, I think it I I think it has to end though because what do we do I mean you know John Cena wins um we we're really gonna keep doing this challenge you know R- yeah. Rusev Rusev's still gonna want another bite of the apple we gonna we gonna do that for a third time or are we gonna find a new challenger from the mid cards to face the guy who nobody can can really defeat I mean I see have no feud none and it just keeps going until someone knocks him off no feud who who would you have knock him off. I don't know. Um, may, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, maybe, I, I, the, the thing is, the, you know, if I was gonna have a guy knock him off, it probably would have been one of the NXT guys. And, you know, I don't, I, I don't know. I mean, Finn Balor is kind of too small. So I wouldn't have picked him. I certainly, absolutely would not have picked Kevin Owens. No way. I don't know. I, I, I like Neville or Zayn. I thought they would have been good choices. You know, to be honest with you, I think, I think, they're believable. I mean, they've been around for a while. Yeah, you know? it, might, it might still happen. I mean, you know, but I'm not sure. I mean, I'm. I mean, I would definitely have an NXT guy because everybody, every other guy has held a, a mid card title. You know, I, the only I, the only other guy. I mean, I don't know. I, you'd have to have. I I would be okay with maybe Wade Barrett if he to- turned the title into the European title, but then you just shit on everything you just did to build up the U.S. title. So. You can't do that either. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, that that's kind of true. Well, I mean, I mean, it could possibly work with Wade Barrett. You know, he, he's now king of the ring. He's from Europe. Now he wants to definitely conquer America properly. So he's going to take the title. I mean, you know, hell, it worked for Rusev. Well, wait, he could do that with the Intercontinental title now that that's available again with, with, um, with, well, we'll talk about that in a little bit about Daniel Bryan, but Wade Barrett, um, you know, he's the king of the ring now. Uh, he got a, he actually got, I'd say as clean as a win a heel is going to get over Dolph Ziggler tonight. I thought that was interesting. Ziggler's feuding with Sheamus. Yeah. And they had a, a, a pretty short match. Um, Sheamus, um, was at ringside and I really did enjoy Wade Barrett mentioning how his good friend Sheamus was at ringside and Sheamus really played up his friendship with Wade Barrett. I really like that whole deal between the two of them. Yeah. But, um, Sheamus just kind of stood up on the rope. And that was enough to cost Ziggler the match. I was surprised by that. Yep, there you go. Simple but effective. Yeah. I I really thought Ziggler was going to wait on the first move with that super kick. That would have been hysterical <laughs> if he won that easily. But um, it was for not. I, but, I, 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 I almost thought they were going to do it. I really did. And I, and I, my first reaction was going to be, fuck, we put King on the ri- King of the Ring on Barrett for this? Really? But they, they, they Billy Gunn. They, they, yeah, they, they did the right thing though. Billy Gunn, his first night as King of the Ring, lost to Bradshaw, who was a tag team wrestler with the Acolytes at the time. Yeah, he, he was, had, he, he wasn't even world champion quality yet. No, it, it was, um, 
pretty surprising that they would do that to him. They might as well let Bradshaw win King of the Ring at that point. Um, but Wade Barrett got the win. I thought Wade Barrett looked strong. Um, I don't see John Cena coming out of the Sheamus feud with a win, to be honest with you. He's putting all these guys over, unfortunately. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But, um, so we, I mean, so, so here, here's the thing. We went through this first hour pretty quick. And, and like I said, um, the fact that you first bring out Cincinnati local Dean Ambrose for opening match. And, you know, I was, I was a good, what, almost eight, 10 minute match. The, the opening promo was 10 minutes. Um, then you bring out Dolph Ziggler versus Wade Barrett. Um, uh, and you had the two of them face off in, in a fairly good match. Um, and that took us all the way up to nine o'clock. And I'm thinking, Jesus Christ, you, you've already spent, you know, you sent four guys out there who are pretty hot. Um, they, they just blew their road in the first hour here. Now we're, now everything is just going to be boring, fuck ton promo city for, to push for the pay per view on Sunday. And, and the next two hours are going to suck, but, uh, not quite. Well, that's where Cena and Neville came in. They completely delivered. Yeah. But, but that, after that point, I agree with you. It really got cold from there. Yeah, a little, well, yeah, a little bit. I mean, they, they did a good job of taking up almost 30 minutes. Right. Of, of the second hour with, with John Cena and Adrian Neville. I mean, that, and that was just fabulous. I'm sitting there watching the clock going, wow, they are really giving these people time. But then, I'm kind of glad that they kept this short. Kane was supposed to come out and, and fight Reigns and that, that just ended up in a blow off squash match, thankfully. Um, so it kind of saves up Reigns a little bit for the pay per view on Sunday, but it kind of puts over the point, you know, everybody's going to be going into this, uh, the main event on the pay per view a little banged up. If Kane's such a prominent character though, why did Roman Reigns just beat the shit out of him? I mean, it wasn't really a match. It was just a beating. I don't really understand that. Well, I think they're still trying to put put over the point that you know start started the hour earlier. K- Kane's loyalty was in doubt, so now it looks like he he Kane didn't care if he won this match or not. He doesn't have any stakes in this. He went out there as the authorities, you know, lead hunt dog, and, and just gave a beat down on Reigns to soften him up to make it just a little bit easier on your champ. Yeah, but it didn't really play out that way. Reigns wound up getting the upper hand at the end. Well, you know, you got to try at least. True. I don't know. I just think Kane's been such a prominent figure. I think he came out of that segment very weak. You know what I mean? And, and, well, that's okay, though. I mean, because you've been around as long as Kane has. You, you know, it, it just kind of doesn't matter. I guess, but I don't know. I, I don't know. I just feel... I I, I, I don't know. I just, I feel like Kane's been, been really strong lately, and it, it was kind of surprising to see him get beat down like that. I think WWE's done a really good job even though nobody wants to to buy it, I think WWE's done an outstanding job of making Kane and Big Show look like threats again. I think, um, but I mean, I understand they're not, but they they do beat people up occasionally, you know. And Kane didn't look too good tonight. Speaking of which, um, well, before we do that, real quick, I just wanted to get in some some comments from the chat room. We yeah, we still okay, run a chat right. room, angrymarks.com forward slash chat. Uh, one comment. Is it racist that white guys are delivering arrows? Shouldn't that be Tatanka's job? Oy vey. <laughs> we won't mention who says that. Um, Monday Night Yawn, though, uh, chimes in. I hope Rusev wins and makes it to the Russian title and he'll only defend it in Russia. And then he fights Rocky Balboa on Christmas Day. I'd like that. Um, <laughs> uh, and one more here. I, it just scrolled past me. Um, where'd it go? Where'd it go? Oh yeah. Um, re- regarding my comment about, about John Cena, uh, being in any wrestling promotions hall of fame. What about the TNA hall of fame? John Cena would never, <laughs> would never be that low to be, to be in that piece of crap. Yeah, there we go. And Bionic Iguana pretty much made that point. Cena hasn't done shit in TNA. Which Seth, uh, Seth Draken, our, uh, co-host of the Impact Implosion every Friday night or Saturday night, whenever we get around to it, uh, followed up with, uh, uh, saying, no, Hogan isn't in the TNA fame, Hall of Fame either. And he also says, I, you know, Tenzai, I agree, um, with Kevin here. Why is Neville any different than Ambrose? He may sadly be the new Evan Bourne. I, well, somebody's been reading Mark Madden's columns. I disagree with that. 
Um, he will not be the next Evan Bourne. He's bigger than Evan Bourne. Evan Bourne looked extremely scrawny and pathetic. And I, I, I'm sorry. I, I know people love him, but he was so small that it wasn't really impressive all the stuff he did because he's so, he was so little. Neville, although short, is stocky as you can. I mean, he's like a little Benoit. And I, I, I'm not trying to make a joke. I'm serious. Doesn't he remind you of Benoit? Like, not his wrestling style, but his build. He's unbelievably built. And he uh, looks like a badass. Well, he might, he, he kind of reminds me of a very early Benoit, but by the time Benoit got to WWE, he, he was just jacked. I mean, he, he, he was as broad as a, as a horse barn door. Um, sure. So. Neville's a big dude though. He's no, he may not be tall again. How tall is he? I, I don't know, but I, I, I mean, I, th- I thought he was like six, six, well, let's, one. Let's look at Wikipedia here. Um, and see what they say. Yes, because Wikipedia is always the bastion of truth. But then again, you're dealing in pro. Re- you're, then again, you're dealing in pro wrestling. You know where Hulk Hogan was advertised at one point, like six 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 seven. He's five ten, same height as me, and one ninety four. Now, wow, I mean, he's he's the same height and weight as I. Am. <laughs> if he's one ninety four, dude, he's all muscle. All muscle. I mean, he is. He's a bull, man. I, and you know what? I won't disagree with that because I, because at my one ninety four, I am flabby everywhere. <laughs> well, I'm not at Neville, and I'm I'm just saying he he's a bull, man. And I I think to be sustainable in WWE, Vince McMahon and and his crew has to have like you know like feelings for you in weird ways, and because you have to be built. And Neville is the, their mold, but just shorter. You know, they like that, that stuff. And I, I don't know, man. He's different. He's different. Hmm. He really is. And I, I don't think Dean Ambrose is in a bad spot at all. I don't know what, what, what Draken's talking about. I mean, Ambrose was U.S. champion for forever. Well, he's in the most successful stable, like, of the last decade. And he's constantly main eventing pay per views. I don't think Ambrose is in a bad spot at all. That, that the problem with, today's wrestling fan is they think everybody should be in the main event and, and I, I don't i you you can't that's you can't have that well so, I, I i think part of the problem with it is kind of like the same problem with bray wyatt is yeah you know they're they're constantly in top spots but more often than not they're not getting the win and so kurt henning and rick rude did that make their all-time greats what big win did mr perfect and rick rude ever get right i mean think about it Right? Am I right or am I wrong? You might be right on that. I, I would have to go back and look because that's been years, but, uh. But that, that's my problem because I have that problem myself. And I, I really have been harsh on the WWE for everybody being 50 50. And, and, you know, I have eight wins and eight losses and everybody is breaks even and I hate that. But they are starting to get away from that. And there are guys that are more dominant and that's what it should be. And it doesn't mean that. It doesn't mean, like, that's what I'm saying. Dolph Ziggler has really made me appreciate what he brings to the table because no matter what happens, I still think he's a top guy. There are times where you can look bad. Dean Ambrose does not look bad. You want to know who looks bad? Fandango looks bad. Okay, Boy. let's start with him. We're going to talk about two two sets of people that look bad. Fandango got squashed clean by Luke Harper and by Eric Rowan two shows in a row. He won't recover from this. He got an- annihilated by Eric Rowan. And Eric Rowan hasn't really beaten anyone lately. So he's dead. He's gone. That's burial. That's destroyed. Fandango is a jobber. Period. End of story. He is a jobber. And Chris Jericho put him over at WrestleMania. Oh, my God. Fandango is a jobber, okay? And they took a piss in Chris Jericho's face tonight in this match. However, I do really like Rowan and Harper back together. So... Number one, do you agree with me? Fandango is a jobber. Number two, how do you feel about Rowan and Harper back together? Yeah, I, I think Fandango is is mostly a jobber, and I'm fine with that uh, because too. because he's he's you know we've got so many great guys on there. I'll be honest here, w, every wrestling promotion needs great guys who constantly lose, who are yeah. constantly on the bottom, be, because those guys have to make the other guys look good, and you know. It's okay with me. He's got he's got a, an annoying gimmick that nobody likes anyway. So he might as well get beaten. He looks good getting beat every week. He doesn't 
He doesn't necessarily look like a loser getting beat. We just know he's never going to be a winner. He's our modern day Rip Rogers. There, there you go. There, th- wow. There you go. I like that comparison. Thank you. <laughs> um, as, as for putting, uh, Rowan and Harper back together. Yes, absolutely. I think they did a horrible job with, uh, Rowan's singles push. I, I think it's went badly. Luke Harper, on the other hand, his singles push went absolutely great. Yeah. Um, I made, the, they, they, they got, they kind of got back together last Thursday on SmackDown and I kind of made this comment on, on a, on a Facebook group then. Um, I like the fact that these two were paired together and then they were against each other and now they're back together again like brothers. I like that dynamic between these two. It, it's a dynamic that worked really well for Undertaker and Kane for years. I love it. it. They are, they're just bizarros and that's what they do. Yeah. And, and, and when you, you know, when you put them together, they, they just kick so much ass and I like it. But I tell you what I like even better. The, the, the main reason I like them being together is the fact that they were going to use Luke Harper's music and we're going to get rid of that suck ass music that, 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 uh, Rowan has. Jesus. Luke Harper's Christ. music's awesome. No, that, it's, that, that just sucked. It absolutely oh, it, it's, sucked. I agree. Luke Harper's music is awesome. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you said Rowan's music was awesome. Like, oh, I love Luke Harper's music. Yeah. I mean, I mean, Harper's music is great. I mean, it, it kind of personifies this gritty, uh, no holds barred, you know, bare knuckle kind of, kind of just hill jack kind of thing. Well, you know what, man? I, I, in a way, as much as I love, I love Cesaro and Kid. I kind of hope New Day retains. I want to see New Day fight a really long match with Kid and Cesaro, retain the title in the two out of three falls, and then the next night on Raw get squashed in like a minute and drop titles to Rowan and Harper. That's what I want to see happen. I, I want to see Rowan and Harper kill them, <laughs> just destroy them. I don't know if they do that this soon, but just as as a general ending, I think that would be fine. I think Rowan and Harper versus Kid and Cesaro will be amazing. Because if you recall, Rowan and Harper had an outstanding feud with the Usos, who aren't, in my opinion, the greatest worker. So, you know, I'm a big Rowan and Harper fan. Right. Just speaking of Fandango getting such a beating, I got to say one thing to you young wrestling fans out there who got to watch Noble and um, Noble and Mercury wrestle in, in dress clothes tonight. Can those two bump like an mf or what, man? They did. They 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 were just great at taking bumps, man. Yeah, how many double clotheslines did they end up taking? Like six. They're just good workers. I mean, they're really, really, really good workers. And I, I kind of feel that way about Fandango. Although he's not great on offense, he is very good at taking bumps. Yeah, but Monday, and that's not a bad thing. Not a bad thing at all. No. Monday night, Yawn just ch- chimed in. If you look in the mirror and you say "no holds barred" three times, Zeus appears. Oh God, dude! <laughs> Real quick, um, I, n- nothing really, s- not much to say here. Tamina was back on TV. She um got a big win over Brie Bella, I guess. So yeah. Tamina's with um, what's her name now? The one with the big ass. Um, Naomi. Yeah, Tamina, and the, Tamina, and the girl with the big ass. Yeah, I think and they, so. they're not going to take the title off Nikki Bella. No, no, way. no, probably not. Unfortunately, I missed this match. I had to step out of the room. I, I didn't terrible. know. I didn't, I didn't intentionally do it. You know, I, you know, um, you know, I'm, I actually kind of like Bella. So, so I, you know, I didn't mean to miss this. Totally not intentional this time. Daniel Bryan comes out tonight, tells us he doesn't know how long he's going to be out from his injury. He may, there, some people are telling him he might not ever come back. Some are telling him he could be back soon. But he certainly doesn't want the inter- Intercontinental title in and out of an orthopedic office. So he's going to vacate the belt. Thoughts on this? This is the end of Daniel Bryan ever holding a title again. I would agree with that. Will um, we see him again? He he needs to take, I'd say he needs to take a year off and, and just completely heal from everything. Try to get his health back together. And you know what? Start him back in NXT again. If he can, if he can, if he can do, if he can survive all the bumps and everything in NXT, then go ahead and bring him back up, um, to Raw and to SmackDown and, and uh, put him in the mid card. 
but, uh, you know, he's had too many scares with his health legitimately. Um, I, I don't, you know, w- with the concussions, the, the arm injury, the shoulder injury, the neck injury, um, he, he's done beat himself up way too hard o- over the last decade. I, I don't want to see him put in a situation like Edge where the doctors tell him one day, you know what? Next move, you're dead. You know what though? I, I think that's where we are. And that's where I'm going with this. So I think Edge is brilliant. I think Corey Graves is brilliant because both of them are going to get hurt so, so hurt very badly. And Corey Graves has a lot of balls to walk away because he was about to make it big. Whether he would have made it or not, he still would have had the big spotlight and he would have got to do his thing. And I can't imagine how hard it had to be for Corey Graves to make that decision because it was his decision ultimately. Right. And Edge, I can understand, because he really did accomplish everything there was to accomplish. So, you know, it probably wasn't as hard to walk away. Daniel Bryan, to a degree, honestly, I feel like he has accomplished everything. He made it to the main event legitimately. He won the WWE title. He did what he needed to do. I, I don't, I don't think this is because, and I kid around, and I don't, I don't think I've ever said it here on the air, but, you know, I might have said it to Vic off air, like kidding around that he's not adorable. Daniel Bryan is absolutely adorable. He got freak injuries, and that's part of sports. And his career, which I didn't follow a lot of it, but he's he's been around a long time, and he's been fairly injury free, and he's had a bad run. And I just think his body's broken down. He's a, he's he's not yet super young for sure. And I think wrestling's a lot more demanding than it was ten years ago. And I think. I think this is it. I really do. I hate to say that. I don't think it's because he, he, he didn't have the, the build for it or anything like that. I think it just, you get a couple of bad injuries and that's that, you know, and hit the way his, the way his, he, he's supposed to work as for his size and for his skill set and move set. He can't work at that level. There's certain, you know, like a mankind, no offense to him or Terry Funk, but they wrestle that hardcore style where, you know, you're not, you're, you might be taking big bumps, but they're not very athletic bumps. You know, I, well, I, I don't think Daniel Bryan is going to be able to do this anymore. I hate to say that. I, I will be perfectly honest here. His wrestling style in Ring of Honor set him up for this ending. Uh, yeah. you know, and, and this was during, you know, he wrestled in a period of Ring of, in Ring of Honor where, where independent wrestlers really kind of did have to step it up. You know, quite a bit and, you know, not quite hardcore, but, uh, the strong, you know, strong style wrestling was the thing and Ring of Honor was the place where strong style wrestling was it. And Daniel Bryan did fabulous there and he had a fair, you know, pretty much an injury free career all through that, but it wore his body out. So when it took, came time for him to step up to the rigors of a WWE schedule, and I'll be honest, you know, you compare, you know, mid 2000 Ring of Honor strong style with the working style of WWE today. WWE is grueling. Yeah. It is absolutely grueling. You have to be a thoroughbred to be able to work WWE schedule and work the WWE style. And if Daniel Bryan had not done Ring of Honor and had been able to come up to WWE, he would be fine now. But he, he chewed himself up. And can you know what? I tell you, you know, I love what you just said. And I, I don't think people give credit for this. I think, you know, me and Victor, you know, we're in jobs where we do travel a lot. You know, I, I'm mostly regional up and down the East Coast. Victor's all over the country, sometimes international for his job. And that staying in a hotel room, not being at home, trying to get to the gym, the, it is horrible. It, it's n- just do us doing white collar work is it, it's draining. And on the weekends, all you do is sleep because you're trying to catch up from the week you just worked being out of your own element all week. And these guys live that every day and then have to be because people are probably like, oh, how hard can it be? You go to the gym for an hour a day and do a 15 minute match. But it's not that it is the travel and and you're on a plane cramped up the majority of the day and then you got to get limber to do 15 minutes it, it really isn't a good style it's because wwe has to make every frigging dollar with their house schedule schedule 
And I, I, I think WWE has lost money in the long run because of the schedule. Don't you think? I don't know if they lost money, but you know, it, it really just, it, it just chews up guys. Killing them. Killing them. You know, and, yeah. and, and you know what? I'll, I'll just say this, just kind of end it. It's, it's because of what Daniel Bryan has gone through. It, it does worry me that it's going to happen with Zam- Sami Zayn as well. I mean, hell, Sami Zayn on his raw debut throws out his shoulder, just waving to the crowd, you know, and Zayn's already had a, you know, a, he's, he's had an injury in NXT. He's had a couple of injuries in, in Ring of Honor. So, you know, for those reasons, if Sami Zayn can have a career like Daniel Bryan has had, he's going to be damn lucky to have reached that. And I'll be honest. And also because of this, I do worry about Kevin Owens because Kevin Owens was right there with fucking Sami Zayn all along the way. The two of them banging each other up in some of the roughest matches to, to end you know, what, what I call one of Ring of Honor's greatest periods. And, you know, now they're here in WWE and they're going to be expected to work the WWE style, just like Daniel Bryan. And, you know, I start to worry about them. I know I can tell you what the real problem is. And a lot of people aren't going to want to hear this. Now, I like to tout that I'm an ex athlete, which I am. And I, I can tell you why all these guys are getting injured and nobody's going to want to hear it. And I'm going to get killed for saying it. You want to know what the real problem is? What's that? steroids what happens when you're training with human growth hormone and all the different things they use most likely probably winstrol which is why everybody's so ripped the, the, it causes remember when undertaker tore his pack you don't tear a pack in the gym the these enhancing drugs cause those type of injuries because they're pulling at the muscles because of the rapid growth and i look at Sami Zayn from 10 years ago i i've done my research he might not be huge, but he's a lot bigger than he was when he was a younger man. These guys are pressured by the WWE to look a certain way and be very fit. And they're messing around with this stuff. I don't care what anyone says. They can say there's just the wellness program where all they want. The guys physically change in appearance in the WWE. I, I've seen it. I, I You can Google pictures of these guys, and you can see what I'm talking about. And that's why all the injuries are happening. Well, I mean, part of the change could also be the fact that now that they are in WWE, they have access to, to better training and better regimen and, and better trainers. And they, they can, they get paid to have a schedule where they can go work out more. You, you got to right. think most indie wrestlers, hell, at, at least 80% of indie wrestlers still have a shoot job they got to go to, <laughs> you know, in addition oh, okay. to, you know, trying to fit everything in. So, you know, you know, Jim's not always going to fit in. And plus, you know, they've got to take bookings everywhere. And, and with their travel schedules, you know, not only do they not necessarily have the time to build in for that, they don't have the time. They don't have the money to, don't, to don't, go hit the gyms either. I so I agree with you a hundred percent. And that's part of it. That is part of it. But trust me, WWE's trainers know what drugs are legal and which ones aren't. And they could dance that line. There's a drug called Fina. It, they, they, they feed it to cows to help them grow rapidly. It's legal. You can get it. And you could give it to yourself. And people do that. I know guys that are weightlifters that do it. And it's ridiculous. It's insane. And th- that will lead to injuries. And there's just too many guys getting injured. And, and, and if you don't think I'm telling the truth, why do you think all these guys are dropping dead at 50 or with enlarged hearts? What do you think causes an enlarged heart? So I'm not even going to get into that because I know people get upset. But I worry about these guys. I really do because I enjoy them. I care. I actually care about them, believe right. it or not, because they entertain me. And I I would rather not see jacked up brutes every week. I, I'd rather see good athletes that are there that are always there and always around to entertain, not get injured. So I do feel bad for these guys. And the good news is the main event was so uneventful tonight that there's <laughs> – <laughs> not a lot to cover, but I do, I do want to bring up real quick because there's not much to say about it before we talk about the main event and basically end the show. But, um, Axel Mania oh. took on Macho Mandow, which was Damien Sandow dressed up as Damien Sand, as, as Macho Man with Macho Man music tights and all. Yes. <laughs> These guys did the Hogan Macho Man showdown. And before Macho Man Dow could hit the big elbow drop, the Ascension, I, I feel horrible for these guys. The Ascension oh. 
comes down. It actually was kind of cool when their music hit. I'm like, wow, these henchmen are going to actually kill these guys. And then I thought to myself, wait a second, these guys just lost seven weeks in a row to the Lucha Dragon seven weeks in a row. So they're probably not going to. And I was right about that because they basically imply in their little speech, you guys are copying off people and are delusional, blah, 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 and basically are underlying the fact that they're copying off the Legion of Doom themselves. And it was just terrible. And essentially Sandow and Axel Mania beat the shit out of the Ascension, dumped them out of the ring. The Ascension ran away. And Sandow and Axel Mania recreate the night the Macho Man and Hogan shook hands and formed the Mega Powers. I can't let this go, Kevin. We gotta talk about this. What'd you think of this? Oh god, this was this was the worst segment of the night. This may be the worst segment of the month. This may be the worst segment of the fucking year. Jesus Christ, what the f I mean did did somebody in the Ascension not suck somebody's dick right? You said uh, you're, they're going to get released. I mean, what, soon. what, what the hell have they done to deserve this? I don't understand. I mean, they, have they not been punished enough? Have these two young men, Connor and Victor, not been tortured enough by the writers of WWE? I mean, what, what, that, what offense ha have they created? I mean, did, did, did they, did they kill a couple of their friends in their condo over the weekend? And, and Vince happened to find out about it? I mean, did, did, did they, did they toss Triple H a deflated ball? Um, did, I mean, did, did they, did they take their wives and, you know, give them an uppercut and a, you know, in the lobby or the, the lift of a hotel? I don't understand what they did. To deserve this. This is absolutely ridiculous. Absolutely fucking ridiculous. They, they sent him out with this great promo. And it got me hyped to think, oh shit, they're going to come out here and clean the clock That's of this thought. absolutely horrible comedy bit. And instead, the comedy fucking bit killed them. Not just, they didn't beat them. They didn't rough them up. Fucking killed them. And I'm well, losing why? my voice of his, I don't, why? and, and it was pointless. Why? Absolutely pointless. Why? Why is this happening? I, I don't know. I mean, and, and it's, I give up. I'm, I'm, I'm honestly, I'm, I'm in tears here. They, they are ruining these guys' careers. I mean, I it, might have to change my name to Angry Ascension. I mean, like, really? You might have to. I mean, it's, here's the thing. I am quite sure Brian O'Connor, and Dick Rector will show up joining the menagerie in 90 days for the set for the next taping of Impact, which is December 21st version. <laughs> for December 21st, but um, I I mean, you got it. You, would you be surprised? Seriously, would you be surprised if they're released within the next month? I wouldn't. Um, I you know what. WWE's not been really big about releases over the last year. Um, I, I don't see WWE releasing them. I, I could easily see them just saying, you know what? We've had enough. We're done. Please let us out of here. Please just, just cut our contracts. Are, let are us we, go. Can I ask you though, are we delusional? Because I read some of the stuff online and I, I feel like, like a lot, like all the supposed fans of them are like gone. Like, all these NXT heads, no one sticks up for them. And I, I look at these guys, and I'm kind of like, they look like badasses to me, and their work looks pretty good to me. Am I missing something? Like, they don't, like, maybe I want to believe in them. I don't know. I'm thinking it might be me, but I think they're good. I like them. They are, they are good. They really are good. Go back and watch all their NXT matches. No, why are the Lucha Dragons being pushed? They suck. Sorry. They suck. They do it. They do a bunch of flippy things, and there's better flippy guys in the federation. You don't need them, honestly. I think the Matadors are better workers than them. Yeah, um, suck, you know. I mean, dude. I mean, I mean, I'm not. I mean, I won't say that the Lucha Dragons suck, but yeah, the suck. Ascension, the Ascension are better than them. Yeah, and they, these dude, literally pull results down. Superstars, Ascension is job to them literally seven weeks in a row. It's it's wrong. You know, the, the Ascension are better, are, really are better than the Lucha Dragas. They're, they are better than the Matadors. Um, I'd say they're, 
at the very least, they're on equal footing with the primetime players. Um, they're on equal footing with the Usos. Um, uh, I mean, I, I just don't, that something had to have happened backstage to make this happen and nobody's telling the story as to why I, you know, I, and it, it just kills me. I don't understand. They'll never recover. No, they won't. And, and, and what I'm afraid is even if they're released, um, they're going to have to completely change their names, change their gimmicks and never be in the same room ever again, because I, I think this is going to do damage to their careers outside WWE. Poor guys, man. They worked hard. They deserve more. You know, they're, they're going to, they're going to be at, you know, fan conventions and comic cons 20 years from now. And this is still what they're going to be remembered for. You know, Connor, you know, he's big guys, you know, he's kind of, he, he's kind of a diamond dozen, but I actually think Victor's actually very talented. Yeah. I don't know. I feel bad for these guys. Um, real quick, Cesaro beat, um, beat Big E tonight. So they're going to have another match, two out of three falls. Um, Cesaro and Kid versus, um, New Day at the pay-per-view, and then we have the main event, which was Seth Rollins versus Randy Orton, and we all know what happened. What happens every week to end Raw? Giants, schmas, everybody and their mother gets involved, and we sell the main event of the pay-per-view. Anything yeah. you want to add to that? I mean, that's really what happened. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, literally, I guess Orton was going to hit it in RKO. J&J caused a disqualification, and then everybody gets involved. Kane gets to be, what, what, what would I use? Kane gets to be, um, vague and evasive about who he's going to side with and leave it open ended for, um, for the pay per view. Yeah. And then Ambrose hits dirty deeds on everybody, which, which is what he did the last week. Um, I think, and you might think I'm crazy. I actually think Ambrose might actually win and be champion, but. He's going to join the authority. No, no way. Why not? No. The reason I say that is because Ambrose is kind of thrown in and Kane said, I have a plan for the pay-per-view. And that that's after Ambrose got put in. Also, three weeks before that, Kane made a comment, which is one I loved, was the one where he got really fired up and he goes, we could have made anyone champion. What makes you think it would be any different than if we made Dean Ambrose the champion? Because we could have. Hell, we could have made El Torito the champion. <laughs> but I thought that was an interesting choice of words. No, it's it's not going to be because Triple H is too loyal to Seth Rollins. How do we know that though? Because I I don't I don't think Seth Rollins has done anything to cheese off Triple H. You know, if anything, he's cheesed off. You know, he's cheesed off at Kane, but. Well, and that's what I don't really understand. Like, this all started right after WrestleMania. And and Kane's been extremely good to Seth Rollins. Why was Seth Rollins so pissed off that Kane didn't win the Andre Battle Royal? Like, that's really what it was about. Uh, I, I think uh, I think Seth Rollins is just absolutely jealous of Kane for everything he's done and the fact that he holds this high position of esteem with Triple H. And he's done a real good job of, of getting him to turn on each other. That's a good point. He doesn't like that CEO, COO position. I never really thought of that because he didn't really view Big Show as anything except a, a, as muscle. But he did see Kane as an authority figure that could be a threat long term. So, yeah, I could see that. That actually makes good sense. Yeah. So but I love, I love Kane. And, you know, although as a wrestler, he's been pretty poor lately. I love his character within the um, within the authority. I, I like him. Being pissed off all the time. I think it's funny. It is. It, it, it really is. But, um, I don't know. I get, it should be an interesting pay per view, but I, I didn't, th- I, I think you really summed up Raw well tonight. Strong two hours, weak last hour, but overall, it kept my interest. And that, that's saying something. Yeah. I mean, for, for a go home show, it was actually decent for once. Yeah. You know, I, I've said this before and tell me if you disagree. I feel like you could watch Raw. Up until the main event, and it's always going to be good. If you, the main events are never good ever, no matter who they book. I, they I wouldn't say them. I wouldn't say they're not good, but they are definitely predictable. And if if you turn it off the main event and you hear the result the next morning, you don't really feel like you really missed anything. 
But I don't understand. Like, why wouldn't you set up your card where Neville and Cena were the last match? Well, I can understand why they put the last match on that they did. Because, why? because, because that's the main story that you've been trying to but, push all this time. But that's, you're not selling anything. You, you have people with subscriptions. Well, I mean, it, I mean, that, I mean, that's great. But if you're trying to sell subscriptions, then you need to push that story. And it's not going to be John Cena versus Neville on Sunday. You know, that, that's not, yeah. gonna, that's not going to be on the network on Sunday. As a matter of fact, this match isn't going to be on the network for another 31 days. So. Well, Neville versus Cena. Right. Will, will beat anything that is aired next Sunday. It would, you know what? It probably will. But, you know, at the same time, you know, that's not what they book for the pay-per-view. That's not the storyline that they book I'm, for the pay-per-view. So I am mean, smitten with John Cena and Neville right now. Yeah, I I think those two definitely have a future feud. Yeah, I mean, honestly, the Sami Zayn thing was was very exciting. Yeah. But it wasn't this. No, it wasn't. And and I tell you what, there there were a few points in that match where they, they kind of got a little snotty with each other. Um, like, you know, like five minutes into it, Neville had kind of gotten some offense together and John Cena kind of got up off his feet and he completely nullified it with a sucker punch right in the face. So do you, th- you think some I mean, of that stuff might have been, I mean, I gotta think part of this is like Cena's a great guy for agreeing to all these matches to better all these guys' careers. But I gotta think there is some, there is a degree to, of Cena wanting to play that Bob Holly Bradshaw role where he does have to keep these guys kind of in their spots, right? I mean, that's gotta be part of it. Well, I don't know. I don't, I don't think that's, I don't, when I, when I say they got, you know, they've got beef or whatever, I don't think it's legitimate, but it's just, it's just coming out with their characters. They, they, they've got a little bit of, you know, a little bit of badass in them. You know, I was not expecting G- Cena to throw a, a, a right jab, you know, right into Neville's face to knock him down. And, and totally change the tide, you know, may, maybe throw a right hand to the side of the head, you know, like a, you know, a good old big hook that, that you'll traditionally see a wrestler yeah. throw. No, this was just, this was a dirty jab that, I'm gonna tell you that put him down. It, but, you know, but later on, in, like later on in the match, um, you could see the, just the expression on Neville's face as he was handing out some of those kicks yeah. to the midsection and setting up his moves. He's like, God, you know, the character is just like, God damn it, I can't put this guy away. The fuck I got to do here? You know, I'll tell you, Cena proved this with the U.S. title feud or the U.S. title run. When Cena finally does the heel run, it's going to be the biggest thing in wrestling in the last 15 years. He's never going to do it. He's going to do it and it's going to be huge. He's not. Ne- he's never going to do it. He's even gone on record saying, what? Why does he need to go on a heel run? He He already gets people that booze him every night. He needs to go on a heel run because WWE needs it for business. I I, I, I honestly don't think turning Cena heel w- would do anything for the business. It, it It's not like what, when Hulk Hogan turned heel, what that did for the business. I don't think a Cena heel turn would do that at all. A Cena heel turn would be like Bret Hart's heel turn in WCW. I don't know, man. If it's done right, though, I mean, there's so much you can do. You can spin off a third brand to be like an FCW and he could take NXT and make it the main, the main brand. He could go over there and say, I'm going to throw the world title in the trash and I'm going to the NXT brand. And that's going to be our new brand. I, I just can't see him do it. I mean, hell he, he runs with the, one of the biggest bitches in, in WWE right now, his girlfriend. And that doesn't even erase his fucking smile. He goes out there shiving and jucking every single night and, and it doesn't wear him down. That's what he lives for. That is absolutely what he lives for. You know, Hulk Hogan showed, showed weaknesses in his humanity in, in his baby face character over the years. That just doesn't exist. It's not in Cena's Dude, nature. If you want to see John Cena get rattled, go, go, go download. One night stand, 2006 against Rob Van Dam. Right. He wasn't. He wasn't having a good time that night. I promise you that. I have never seen a crowd more hostile, and they were in his head. And 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 th- that was the Chicago CM Punk crowd wasn't a tenth of that ECW Hammerstein Ballroom crowd. That crowd was vicious. No, I I I I don't think any wrestler, even if they were an ECW wrestler, were were necessarily comfortable with the crowd. 
that night. I mean, they, they were just completely rabid. Well, I mean, I, it makes me wonder. I mean, was there ever, I, would, they wouldn't ever let John Cena walk out of there with the belt, would they have? I, I think they, I think maybe they would have, but I, I think really the plan all along, I mean, why else have this one night stand if we weren't going to put over Rob Van Dam? Yeah, it just, it just, I didn't feel like they were actually going to go through with it. And the thing that I, I recall so much, so vividly about one night stand was when all the referees got KO'd and, and Paul Heyman came down to make the, the count. I was positive on Raw it was going to be reversed because he's not really an official, but it's stud. The call stud. I mean, it, it, it's kind of what had to be done simply for the fact because at that time, um, on the pay per view, there, there's just no way really that, that Cena could walk out of there as the champion in front of an ECW crowd. But at the same time, um, uh, had this match only happened on WWE, I don't think Rob Van Dam would have been accepted had he won, had he won the belt. He was not a WWE guy. True. That's you know, I, I mean, I mean, really kind of, kind of in a similar vein when Ric Flair finally came to WWF and, and took the WWF World Heavyweight Championship. I mean, he, I mean, yeah, he was the champion and, you know, he was legitimate, but th- the crowd, you know, even as a heel, didn't give him that same respect. He, he was that boy from down south. Good point. That is a good point. I still kind of, you know, it's weird. Even watching WrestleMania, I mean, or, or before I, I still kind of felt that way about Sting. I mean, he's kind of like, it's like, shouldn't be here. Well, I, I, in a way, I kind of felt he shouldn't be there just because this whole sense was just fucking Looney Tunes. You know, if yeah. you, if you had gotten him there instead of TNA in 2000, in 2000, 2003, you know, definitely would have been different. Well, I will say this for, for what it was worth, Sting and Triple H gave much more than I expected. I, I, I definitely thought they were going to have a great match, but I didn't expect they could pull off what they pulled off at WrestleMania. They, they were fantastic together. I really enjoyed that match. I didn't think they were going to have a great match. They ended up having a, a much better match than what I thought, and I, I will definitely give them props with that. But at the same time, it, it didn't seem like a WrestleMania worthy match. Oh, I thought it was absolutely. You know, I mean, I mean, based on star power, yes. Based on actual match quality, I'm, I'm still not feeling it. You know, if if they had done that in the pre-show, I think that would have went pre-show? over. Pre-show, dude, that was one of the most epic WrestleMania matches ever. Every key player, like, was in that match. It was a schmoz! But you had HBK super kick fucking Sting's head off, dude. It's, it was a schmoz, though. And, and you know, and, the, the sights of winner. And, and that's a match that should have been left on the pre-show because Bro, the, o- because the only way you were going to see it either, no. either be it live, either, either you have to watch it live to really see that magic happen, or you had to pay WWE Network nine ninety nine to go watch it. Be, buying the pay per view would not be enough. You're telling me that Hulk Hogan, Shawn Michaels, Triple H, and Sting should be on the pre show, <laughs> dude. Kevin, no, I'm they, not letting you get. They, I'm not letting you say that. They I'm are the they are the warm up act for everybody else. You can't be serious. I am serious because they. The, the only one of them that were real, that are, that are fit enough to wrestle these days are, um, is, is basically DX and Triple H. That's it. So Sean, Sean Michaels is not. None of the NWO isn't. So what Sting's you're saying is not. it should have been Triple H versus Billy Gunn. <laughs> that might have been a stronger quality match. Yes. Am I missing something? I thought Triple H and Sting worked a great match. They worked a good match. I, but like I said, it just wasn't WrestleMania quality to me. If, if, it, if, if that match was happening on this Sunday's pay per view, I definitely think that would have been something to look forward to as a co-man event. I, I'll, I'll put that out there, but I, I really don't think it had no, any business you, being on a WrestleMania card. You are spoiled by the fact you had Cena and Rusev, Rollins and Orton, and Lesnar and Reigns all on the same card. I the only way the only way honestly that match worked if it literally was ten years ago when Sting was still definitely in his prime. Sting was just not in his prime anymore. And 
you know, it, you know, if you had subbed out him for Hulk Hogan, if you had subbed Sting out for Ric Flair, if you had subbed him out for Christian, um, I'd still feel the same way because, you know, you're talking about guys who, you know, are great men that I respect who have fabulous careers, but at this point, they just don't have it anymore. They've, they've given it all. So let me ask you a question. You would like to see a Raw where Flair's back, just a Raw, where Flair's back at the beginning of the show and he's saying hi to everybody and Rollins pushes him and bullies him backstage. And Rollins says, if you think you're such a man, tonight main event, world title of the line, <laughs> you wouldn't want to see Ric Flair not shot roll up <laughs> Rollins and walk out in the WWE title. <laughs> no, no, I, I, I honestly, seriously, never want to see Ric Flair ever. You don't think WWE, WWE would be stupid enough to ever put him in a ring again? No way, right? I mean, he's way too old. <laughs> How often did they put May Young in the ring? This is different, though. They, you don't think they'd ever put Flair in the ring, do you? I mean, I don't think they would. I don't think Triple H would do that to Flair. He loves him too much. Oh, here, here you go. Bionic One in the chat room suggests. Triple H versus Larry Zabisco. <laughs> How oh, about new, n- a nude Ric Flair? Bring him out nude. I would love to see that. Flair sixty six. He'd be perfect. Have you seen? Have you seen Zabisco? Did, well, you saw you saw him at the Hall of Fame, didn't you? Yes. Oh man, he he is he he definitely doesn't have the body anymore. He's but he sucks. Zabisco sucks. Flair was the best of all time outside of Hogan. Yeah, I, I'll agree with there, but you know, I mean, like even even like five years ago, Zabisco still had a fairly good body on him, and now he's like he's he's nothing. He's he's a, he's a pencil neck geek now. Well, that's what sucks about getting old. Like Flair actually is in really good shape, but it just your your body just deteriorates, and his he could have guns and you know take care of himself, but this it's skin and all the tanning and. It, there's nothing he can do. It's just the age. It just catches up with you, you know. Well, Flair, Flair still actually looks fairly good. You know, he's 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 he doesn't have the body he had, you know, in the 80s, early 90s. You know, he he and he was absolutely compare him to his late 90s, early 2000s. He was absolutely jacked during that oh, yeah. age as well. Yeah. Um, but you know, but still, he he's, he still has a fairly good body now. Yeah, I just I, I don't know. I I think like um. You know, like, um, his body type is one where he can't really do much. Like, Hogan's always been, like, stocky. Yeah. You know, so he, he doesn't look ridiculous. No. His, well, he looks ridiculous anyway, but his physique does not. It fits, it fits what he's always looked like. Ooh, ooh, got some breaking news courtesy of Bionic Iguana before we end the show. King Barrett on Twitter. What a load of horse crap from WWE Daniel Bryan tonight. I think we all know I deserve my IC title back. Pathetic scenes, jog on. That's all, all work. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, it's all at work, but I can't disagree with him. Yeah, well, what else are you going to do? Also, uh, uh, breaking news. The uh, Elimination Chamber on 31st is going to be a three-hour show. Oh, wow, that's great. Should be so, interesting. There you go. And I'm going to throw this one more out here, too. It's not WWE-related at all, but I'm extremely excited. Um... A friend of mine that I've known in the business for years, uh, Muhammad Ali Vaez, uh, you just heard him a couple of weeks ago on the Undisputed Wrestling Show. He gave a great interview, um, OVW, Ohio Valley Wrestling, heavyweight champion. Um, what I couldn't say then was that the interview that he gave to us two weeks ago was his last interview in the United States. And wow. the next night... He wrestled his last match in the United States and lost the OVW heavyweight title. And I can tell you why now. Um, yesterday, uh, officially announced, um, Muhammad Ali Vaez, uh, has relocated to Australia and he is now officially the head of talent relations for the Australian and New Zealand market for Jeff Jarrett's global wrestling force or global Lucky force him. wrestling. Yeah. I mean, how fucking awesome. I mean, you know, he, he kind of had dreams of, of, of going for WWE, which, which he, he talked about on the Undisputed Wrestling Show a couple of weeks ago of why he did it and why it didn't work out. But he ended up 
having a fabulous career, mostly with OVW, uh, and he got to do a lot of great things. And now that set him up for for this job, um, it puts him in a very important position in a brand new wrestling company that that's looking to really kick ass. So I'm awesome. I, I am I am absolutely I'm 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 just overjoyed that that's that a what? guy. I mean, you know, it, you know, I don't need to know a lot of people in the business, but it's nice that the people that I do know in the business get big breaks like this. I think it's cool. I think it sounds awesome. Good for him. So whatever happened to the dude from Mr. Luger, Mr. Luger, he's still, he's still hanging out there doing his thing. He's, you know, got a wife and kids and are we going to have him on again? Um, I'll be honest, probably not because it, you know, he, that's something he might do every once in a while, but it's mostly, you know, a long lost, it's it's mostly a long part of his past. What's his name again? Devin Sturgis. Devin Sturgis, that's right. So he wouldn't want to come on and talk about Mr. Luger, Mr. Luger again. No, I mean that you know, and, and that's pretty much done. And honestly, he does, you know, he keeps up with with the wrestling that his friends in the business do. Um, but he he doesn't like keep up with WWE. So I think his kids will love to see one day that he was Mr. Luger, Mr. Luger. Oh, he's 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 got like a whole tape library. His kids, you know, are gonna what would see be awesome. And I don't know if you could pull this off. If you could get Sturgis and Luger now, and have Luger call out our truth. I I don't I don't know if Luger even remembers that. <laughs> <laughs> you think it would be inappropriate? I I mean I mean I'm and I and I say that legitimately. I'm not I'm not sure if Luger actually remembers that. Luger is a sad story, man. He used to be the man. Well, you know, we all get old. Well, anything you want to plug before we get out of here? I know we have a week of programming. Um, and I, and I've done forgotten every bit of it. Well, that's okay. We can hit them. We can do it later in the week. Anyway, kill a Kev. Um, thanks for coming on tonight. This was a fun show. I think you can tell we went a little bit over probably because we enjoyed the show and there was a lot to talk about. So that's good. Um, we'll be back next week. Hopefully Big Dick will be back from Turkey and, um, we'll see you guys soon. Kill a Kev. Thanks again. Thanks for letting me be on as well from the production Killer Cab. We have two Killer Cabs with us tonight. Um, and it's been a good one. So thanks everyone. Have a great night. Killer Cab, send us off, buddy. Big Dick, don't get held up at the border and do not let them do a cavity search no matter what. 